incline your ear. Incline your ear. And come unto me. Come unto me. Here. Here said Yahweh, and your soul shall live. The Almighty said, all you have to do if you want to live, if you want to live and prosper, he said, come unto me and do what? Incline your what? Incline your ear. Incline your ear. And come unto me. Come unto me. Here. And then here. So you got to incline your ear, come unto him, and then hear what he got to say. And then he says, And your soul shall live. And then your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. I'm going to make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. I have given him for a witness to the people. A witness to the people. He was that David. A leader. A leader to the people, David. And commander. And a commander to the people. So the Almighty gave us David as a witness, a leader, and a commander of his people. Now the very last thing I'm going to show you today, because our time is running out, I want you to see our report. Because I'm going to show you where the Almighty states that he's going to establish his kingdom on earth, not in heaven. So according to the New Testament, you don't get no salvation until you're dead. You have to be dead. You have to die. Then you're going to go to heaven. And you're going to be up there with the uh, birds and bees just flying around, knocking on Gabriel's gates, drinking milk and honey, flapping your wings around. You understand? And in that kingdom, you won't have no wives, no husbands, no sex, no intimacy, no, no fish, no steaks, just milk and honey. Does that look like a pleasant place to be? No, no. That's a Christian's heaven. All right, you might be lucky like a Muslim and die and go to this great kingdom under the earth where they got rivers of oil, rivers of wine, and another river ain't nothing but milk. And you'll be swimming in them. And then when you swim out, you'll go to your little tent and guess what's greeting you? Seven big eyed virgins just stand at you, waiting to take you inside and do you over. And that's all they dare to do. Do you in when you get dead. But that's about to be the Christians. No wonder they don't mind blowing up themselves to get that. That's man. I ain't got nobody. At least I go, go to heaven, to the paradise, and I don't have seven virgins just wait for me, and as soon as I'm gone. Because all I have to do, and once I die in the name of the deity, and all my sin is forgiven. All that's wiped out because I died for the deity. And them virgins are just waiting to serve me <laughs> night and day. You want to go there. <laughs> young boy, that's all that. That's where you want to go. Good thing your mama ain't there watching you. <laughs> yes. Uh, we won't tell him. <laughs> yes, sir. Keep reading. We're going to read one last thing for you, and that's Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Because we want you to understand this and understand this, because this shows you our report that nobody wants to believe. And who can believe the report? It's easy. I don't know why they would have a problem. If you can believe the report about all them virgins with big eyes that are waiting to serve you day and night, and believe you about sprouting wings and flying off to heaven, I know you can believe Yahweh's report. Because his report, everything that you receive, you receive in your life. Not when you're dead. And his kingdom is on this earth. The Almighty promises people the promised land. And the promised land was no place in the sky. Where's the promised land at? On earth. On earth in Jerusalem. The land of Canaan. That's what Yah promised, promised us for an everlasting possession. And the Quran says... That is the everlasting possession that was promised the children of Israel. 
The New Testament says that. So all the books acknowledge Yah's word, that he's great, you have to keep his laws, and that Israel is his people. Now let's have this book of Ezekiel 37. And before I read 37, let me take, take you one I don't read to you much, 34. Ezekiel 34. Let's start reading the 21st verse. Because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horns. Who is he talking about? He told me about the pastors. Let's go to number, verse 19. Why well, I want to go? 19? 17. 17 or 19? Which one? 17. Go to 17. All right, let's go to 17. As for you, O oh my flock, thus saith Yahweh Elohim. Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. The Almighty said he judged between all his cattle, the strong and the weak, the rams and the he goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture. He's talking to the false pastors. But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastors, and to have drunk of the deep waters. But ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet. And they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Remind me of the preachers down south. They used to go to my grandmama's house down south. Once the preacher come to the house on Sunday, we had to eat the next. It was all the big breasts. The Reverend got that. You understand? He got both the breasts. Both of the legs. <laughs> I was down south, I thought a chicken on it. On the head and neck and some wings. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was different between the chicken running down and one of them eating, because when I'm eating, all I got is necks and wings. Old, old Ram come to the house on Sunday. He got all the breasts, fat legs. He got that. But he said, you leave the residues for the people. What's left over? Go ahead. Therefore, verse 20, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle, because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed all the disease with your horns, till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore, will I save my flock? The Almighty said he will save his flock. And they shall no more be a prey. No more be a prey to all these other mean birds that's feeding off of us. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them. Hello, how many shepherds? The Almighty, now we're getting to it. The Almighty said he's going to set up one shepherd over his people. What is a shepherd? Because Christians, all of a sudden, they go dumb. They don't know what the shepherd means now. Oh, boy. What is a shepherd? Shepherd is someone that leads you. I'll set up one shepherd over them. And he shall feed them. He shall feed them with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Even my servant David. And the one shepherd is even my servant David. He shall feed them. And he shall be their shepherd. And he, David, shall be their shepherd. And I, Yahweh, will be their Elohim. And I'm going to be the God. I, Yahweh, and Elohim. Not we, but I, Yahweh, will be the Elohim. And my servant David, a prince amongst them. And my servant David, he will be a prince amongst them because I'm the king and he's my son. So the son of...